Welcome back. You got Will and I, man, here from the Block Runner, Metazone, and Rovi, and we're going to be talking about our good friend Mark Cuban. He's our friend, dude. Yeah, dude. He's, okay. He's now talking about the metaverse. That's good. So yeah, we did a damn dude. That's interesting. Yeah, we did a Vitalik yeah. take on the metaverse. So that's right. Now Mark Cuban's joining the conversation. This is good. So let, let's see what Mark Cuban is saying. Okay. Um, so I'm going to jump into this uh, Reddit post. Mark Cuban says buying virtual real estate is the dumbest shit ever as metaverse hype appears to be fading. Damn, dude. Dumbest shit ever is yeah. a strong statement. It is. Well, Mark Cuban's full of strong statements, right? That's part of his reputation. That's why he's uh, always a headline grabber. <laughs> yeah, let me see if I can pull up here. Um, check this article out. It's kind of old, February 2022nd. Yeah. Five billionaires who publicly hated crypto and then changed their minds. This is about Bitcoin, essentially, right? <clears throat> um, yeah. Everyone starts with Bitcoin, right? Yeah. So we have Warren Buffett. We got Jamie Dimon is a big one. He, he used to trash Bitcoin on a consistent basis. And then, then and what then, happened? And then, and then he's uh, he's supporting it a now. Per- permable, yeah. Okay. And so now we have Mark Cuban. Um, just to, to be thorough here, we have Carl Icahn and and Howard Marks. Okay. Uh, but nonetheless, Mark Cuban says that he'd rather have bananas than Bitcoin because he can at least eat the bananas. Mm. So he's got a history of saying negative things about the the industry that he now supports. Yeah. So but that's a good thing, right? <coughs> it's a very now, good now thing. that we're pointing out that he's uh, seems to have like a overly negative sentiment towards the metaverse, you know. And we're going to get into this discussion whether he, you know, is um, there's merit behind his words or not. But nonetheless, like at least we have identified there's a precedent where he, he makes a declaratory statement like this that's negative in sentiment. Yeah. At some point, he ends up flipping, <laughs> yeah, in, in support of said thing, right? So, so let's talk about. Let's talk about why he sort of hates crypto at the beginning, and all of a sudden he changes. And and uh, according to uh, sort of what we looked into, Mark Cuban changes his mind on crypto because of NFTs. Okay. The very thing that uh, what he's talking about is the dumbest shit ever, is mm-hmm. buying land. Mm-hmm. And so if you read his article here on Business Insider, um, it talks about how um, it, it seems that he's he's specifically saying that people buying land is dumb. Mm-hmm. And but he says that companies buying land, such as Snoop Dogg or any of the like Nike big brands buying land, is is potentially a good idea. Mm. And uh, and then you made a pretty interesting statement kind of earlier about how we need to create an opportunity to generate money. Well, as, that's as a signal for him. To, I think that's what he's seeing and what he's identifying. Yeah, why is a company going to have much more opportunity? Like when acquiring these virtual digital real estate properties because they already have potentially a way to monetize that right. just by leveraging their own brand and exactly. existence. They have product lines that could easily be trans transitioned into the virtual space. And so there's a potential value return yeah. you know, f- for these types of entities, but for the average everyday person, those pathways to monetization are much more unclear. Yeah, much more <laughs> difficult. Difficult. Yeah, yeah, most people who are investing in digital land, they don't have the resources to, or even the know-how to develop the type of content that is going to be marketable and therefore mm-hmm. monetizable and give them that return, right? Because in a lot of cases, a lot of these metaverse you know, <coughs> designs, it's the land itself is very scarce for a reason because this is a funding mechanic for a lot of these right. projects, right? Right. Without that that value injection within this like a uh, virtual space, like th- there's no way to develop anything in yeah. a lot of cases, at least that's how it began. Right. That's right. how Decentraland operated. They did an ICO in 2017. Right. They sold 90,000 parcels. I think they raised like 25 million. Yeah. That's a lot of money back. This, you know, that, that's, that's enough. That's a war chest to get something sure. built. And here we are four or five years later. I mean, Decentraland is still on top. Yeah, you know, and yeah, that's the number one Web three metaverse at least. Yeah, according to CoinGecko and all you know, categ- uh, yeah, sorting sites. So, yeah. yeah so wh- who's to say? So, okay, we agree and disagree at the same time because you know there may be other models out there that not necessarily are dependent on this scarcity of land to generate some sort of like value economy, right, within it. Yeah, and there's phases to everything too. Like uh, right now the metaverse in the Web3 space is still kind of new. Yeah. There isn't a whole lot of utility, function, purpose yeah. for these types of metaverses yet. Yeah. 
And um, and just like we saw different phases for the crypto industry, DeFi, and then eventually the metaverse, it's going to go from very weird phase where people are generating kimchi coin and pizza coins yeah. to all of a sudden now we have DeFi uh, primitives that are fundamental to creating an ecosystem for yep. the DeFi space. Absolutely. And NFTs and too. I remember there's a period of time where <clears throat> people didn't really understand the value of an NFT. Well, why would anybody pay money? Yeah. To own like a you know a picture, or an image, or something like that. It's right. something that's easily rippable. Like, yeah, and it's still debated today. Is like yeah. why would anybody? What's the value of like owning that asset? The value doesn't become clear until like I guess uh, it's the same thing as like any like money system, right? Like, there has to be uh, an agreement among multiple parties that these things are valuable, right? The same thing with money. Why do we exchange you know yeah d- paper bills with one another and assume there's value with that? Right? Sure, there sure. has to be a consensus among humans. These things have value. There's a market dynamic and to them. One one thing we got to point out that every time that there's a new technology, it's always scoffed at. I yeah. mean, Bitcoin but, was scoffed uh, at, NFTs. Like DeFi, mm-hmm. everything, everything new gets scoffed at until yeah. until you can't. Well, again, yeah, and the reason why you can't is whenever that value is just too present. Yeah. There's too much value present because you know it, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't happen overnight. It's a trickle of again, like it's a it's a, almost a virality aspect to it, like where people have to again come to a consensus. There's value within whatever new technology paradigm that comes about, right? Yeah, yeah. So again, the NFT space rolled out with like NFT artists. Uh, you know, NBA came into the game with the top shots. You know, Beeple made it a lot of noise. He created a unique use case for NFTs. And all of it has been art so far. Yeah, but then like the PFP thing came in and like all of a sudden a new paradigm of NFT application. So once these things become prevalent and there's just clear value within these ecosystems, then... That's whenever these like dissenting opinions is all of a sudden flip, right? yeah. Because the value is clear; it's it's identifiable. Opportunity is present. So therefore, the technology underpinning all of this, it's credible. Yeah, and and so ultimately, it's going to be the efforts on like projects like us to really mm. make that opportunity obvious. Or yeah, basically the community of in the metaverse. Like if you're a developer, you're a, a builder of some kind. Obviously, we're, we're like in a stealth phase at the moment, right? Everybody's building, everybody's experimenting, tinkering, trying yep. to identify, like, where is the demand going to come from, right? Mm-hmm. What is that product of the metaverse? Like, we, we're building virtual worlds. Yeah. It's cool. We can hop into them and stuff, but are there any products there that we, yeah. that we can, like, consume and engage with and, like, build true intimate connection with? Like, man, I want to... I, I spent money on this thing. I want to, you know, I wanted to improve my life somehow. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. My my living experience in the virtual is very much enhanced because I can, bought this product. It's now part of my possession. I now own it. Stuff like this. So the challenge is, what is this product? Yeah. Like, what kinds of products are <laughs> yeah. going to elicit that emotion? Yeah, product or experience, service, something, some sort of benefit to your yeah. livelihood. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of different angles to this, obviously, especially, you know. And and the timing is contextual too. So you can't just make a cool product that is functional and deployable in all these metaverses and expect it to catch on. Mm-hmm. There there requires a market maturity in order to catch on to these functional NFTs. Mm-hmm. And so so we can talk about the phases of what we think is going to transpire in the metaverse. Yeah. Just because we've seen these phases transpire in DeFi and yeah. crypto altogether. Mm-hmm. And so the first phase is going to be basic basic metaverses where you can deploy 3D objects. Yeah. Right? And then um and then all those 3D objects are going to be, you know, coming from notable figures. Mm. And that could elicit a mania just by itself. Yeah, because that's we say this because that's how the 2D like NFT space right. kind of rolled out, right? It's, right. it's just it, it rolled out in these types of phases. Now, I think the like overall NFT space people are demanding and looking for more utility in NFTs, whether that's access to things or I don't know, like uh, whatever your definition as a project of utility is, this is like the new paradigm, right? And obviously delivering utility is much more difficult than delivering something with no utility. For sure. Which I think is largely why the market has taken a pause, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the market is kind of like, you know, the, the, the consumer side of the NFT industry. They're looking for, yeah, um, what is going to be the next paradigm shift as far as like how do we leverage NFTs? So it, 
now everybody's a developer who's you know spinning up these new NFT ecosystems. It's going to take time to uh, make that distinction clear. Like this is the new paradigm layer for NFTs, right? So, right. so yeah, this this as and the metaverse is even in in a more dire situation for that because developing utility for the metaverse is even more complicated, yes, more difficult, you know. But so this is what Mark Cuban is looking at now while we're in a slump. You know, these things are hard to identify at the moment, right? For sure. Yeah. I mean, if you, I mean, we're talking about functional NFTs essentially requires developers. It requires some sort of a business plan. Mm -hmm. And then not only that, business plans change in the context of the metaverse. You can't just create an app and all of a sudden expect people to come to your land and like, that's all you need to do. Yeah. Like there's ecosystems, there's participants in the metaverse that you need to engage in order to make it sustainable. Yeah. And so this complexity is just exponential when it comes to creating something for the metaverse. Yeah. And so it's going to take a while before these phases mature. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we think the basic metaverses are going to be the one that catch on first Mm -hmm. and then it matures. And all of a sudden people are going to expect functional items to be deployable. Yeah. So (laughs) nonetheless, you know, he's paying attention as he should because there's a clear like a potential opportunity. Well, there's but that not only that there's a clear like uh, movement happening like you in the the big tech space right yeah Zuckerberg Zuckerberg Nvidia there's tons of companies looking for their identity as far as like what they're gonna do in the metaverse and how they're gonna contribute to it so people like Mark Cuban they're not dumb they're picking up on this it's like okay why is the whole tech space like talking about the metaverse right so let me go in and investigate and see what exists yeah yeah and like okay see if i could find like the, the golden goose within right. it right and it's like find the thing of why everyone is talking about the metaverse exactly yeah. it would be like the same thing in like 1994 i guess when the internet is emerging it's like yeah you look let at me it look at like, these early websites and see like what's what's so cool about this stuff yeah right? i mean i i was a baby during those <laughs> times so i i never got a good look at that but i'd imagine it was largely you know eerily reminiscent like you see those early web pages they're probably like yeah Ugh. yeah like really, this is going to be the future of like you know communication, information, and all that stuff. Like, right. nah, nah, this is not it, right? Yeah, and and Mark Cuban's famous for all these like declaratory statements. Um, yeah, so he's made a number of them, and he's changed his <coughs> mind several times. And we also need to account. This could be like Mark Cuban playing five D chess, right? Yeah, hundred percent. Like he could just be loading up his bag full of land. Yeah, and all the metaverses that exist that distribute land, and he's just you know. Using his influence to further decrease <laughs> the value of yeah. the market. Yeah. We've seen this happen before, like not just from Mark Cuban, you know, from other like reputable investor types. Yeah. Once the, if they realize they have power and influence over like a sector that they want to be like, you know, powerful within, yeah. like they'll exercise that. For I sure. mean, we speculated that Jamie Dimon was shitting oh, yeah. on Bitcoin for a long time and all of a sudden. Maybe well, he was playing 5D chess too. Yeah. yeah. 100%. He was just buying Bitcoin the whole time. Yeah. So that's possible. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so yeah, that's Mark Cuban saying uh, talking about the metaverse is, is always a good thing. Anybody notable talking about the metaverse is going to be a good thing. Yeah. We have several large companies working on the metaverse. We have big Decentraland, Sandbox, and uh, a lot of these metaverses, um, the other side, one of the, mm. one of the bigger ones. Mm-hmm. And we have tons of potential opportunities here, but I think for the most part, it's going to be more about, you know, can projects capitalize on the current state of like the zeitgeist yeah. of the metaverse. Yeah. And, uh, and it, it's going to be important to be able to identify that because eventually the metaverse will catch on, it will catch on fire and yeah. then people will capitalize on the current state. So identifying that is going to be important. Yeah. And also <clears throat> like one of the biggest, like, uh, I guess misunderstandings or what do we call it? Misconceptions. misconceptions of the metaverse is like, uh, you know, people are expecting X, Y, and Z company or entity to be like the the responsible organization to deliver like these this value that we're talking about that needs to exist in the metaverse. But it's not. It's going to be more of a community. It's a community mm-hmm. task. It's yeah. it's the participants, the contributors of the metaverse projects, like you know, MetaZone, like ourselves, and there's plenty of other projects that are working to identify like what is it that is you know of value like how do we leverage the metaverse the way it's intended to be leveraged you know right. stuff like this this is for us to like figure out right and uh 
It's not going to be Facebook. I mean, these these entities might lay the foundations for a community to exist and yeah. to you know create these new value mechanisms. But at the end of the day, you know, <clears throat> that's I think that is why it's going to be so difficult and like a, such a long term endeavor, right? Because yeah, yeah, if we don't want it to just be like you know we're all relying on Facebook to deliver like the obvious value of the metaverse. Yeah, yeah, we don't want that. No, I mean they have they come from a different um structure. They're they're more centralized. They're they're thinking about yeah. how can we capitalize our current customers. Yeah. Right? They have practically the entire planet. Yeah. And so how they're thinking about how do they create an experience they want to hang you know, hang in mm-hmm. versus how do we create something sustainable whereas the central land could be competing uh, with GDPs of countries, yeah, right, yep. and so I think that's that's sort of what we believe in is is we think the metaverse is is going to compete with GDPs of small small nations, mm-hmm. and then that's when there's going to be a mania of you know how, how do how do you capitalize on that potential, right? Yeah. So it's going to be interesting. Um, so what what are the takeaways for for this discussion? Is basically Mark, well, for one, Mark Cuban, he's right and he's wrong at the same time. Yeah, uh, but he's which, but he's right in the sense I'm not surprised. Like he he probably spent a lot of time just you know traversing through all these different virtual environments and looking for that again. The, the golden goose is like, dude, this is this is a uh, eureka. This is going to be the next you know big thing to make money on, and it's largely not present at the moment. Yeah, if you're advocating the only way to make money in the metaverse is like. Um, buying speculative land and like hoping that it goes up and down in the future. Yeah. At the moment, like it's not clear how that's even possible. So, so he's right in that respect. Yeah. And here in this article from business insider, they, they even call him out. It's like Cuban may not, not be a fan of the metaverse land, but he's still a vocal supporter of crypto and web three. He has invested in Yuga labs. Okay. The biggest NFT project. Yeah. And um, Yuga labs is launching, you know, potentially you know one of the bigger metaverses in web3 yeah and so um so he's saying people dismiss the net just like they they are crypto so he's 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 slowly transitioning yeah. his thought between like you know it's a dumb idea to now he's an investor yeah so yeah so again he's right he's wrong uh he's a supporter he's a non supporter i mean yeah yeah he's just it's really nothing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> really, there's nothing to take away. This it seems just, like he's saying one thing and he's doing another. Yeah, but he's just, you know, this is the way, you know, headlines are generated. For sure. Like, I think they just took that snippet out of like a 30 minute conversation. Like, yeah. this is the most yeah, yeah, it's the egregious catchy. thing he said out of the whole conversation. The most clickable yeah. title. Yeah, so at the end of the day, but these are the things we should expect people to be saying again because of the stage we're at, like, as a. In the metaverse, yes, we're still wrestling with the idea of like what is a metaverse. So of course we're not, we're not going to be able to convince people that it's sure. valuable. Sure, like if we don't even, we can't even like tell them what it is yet. Yeah, right. So this is fine. This is all good. This isn't anything to be like, oh yeah. man, we're screwed. Yeah, the metaverse is done. Mark Cuban doesn't like us. Yeah, dude. <laughs> it's all over. Yeah, it's, that's not the case. Yeah, I totally agree. So so uh, Mark, if you want to chat with us to get some insight of the potential future of the metaverse let us know and we'll happy we'll be happy to have you on yeah um so yeah let us know what you guys think do you uh, agree with mark zuckerberg is the metaverse full of crap um do you own any land which lands do you own and uh, yeah. Should, yeah should you buy land should you not yeah you know that's the question follow our twitter account at the block runner and also at metazone io and we will catch you in the next video peace